everyone so today we are going to be doing the double pinwheel whorls block this is block five of the quilt along basically this is a half square triangle block four segments it's a four patch half square triangles but there's a little twist in here for that special pinwheel um, I've tried many ways of cutting this out the best way to do it is simply going to be use your templates for these two pieces. So for piece A and piece C, you're going to need your templates. I tried to strip piece or strip cut this and make it, it just would not work. Um, piece B, we will be able to use our easy angle ruler to cut that. And um, so let's get started. Uh, this involves a red, a salmon and a background, off-white. I'm using off-white, you could use white, whatever background you're using. I'm switching all of my backgrounds around, so I'm using different neutrals for my background. So let's get started. After you cut your strips, I already have my, uh, my pieces cut that are piece B. Uh, these are make the bit large pinwheel for the background fabric and you're gonna wanna make sure that when you cut your strip that you're not laying, I guess it wouldn't matter. If you laid it like this, you could. What we wanna keep is we wanna keep our biased edges as bias. So when you get to this piece and cut it from the red, you don't want to angle it funny using this angle. Well, you don't wanna use this angle. You want to make sure that you line up this one with the edge. And the reason being is because you want this to remain your bias edge. This will simply sew, let's see, I'm getting turned around here. Yes, you don't want this edge biased edge. You want this straight of grain or against the grain because you'll be sewing it to this one to make your half of your uh, half square triangle. So make sure when you lay these out on your strip that you're going by the warp and the weft of the fabric and you're minding the bias edges, keeping them bias. And also a lesson for this uh, is pay attention to the size of your prints. So your smaller pieces of fabric, your, your or sorry, your smaller templates, you, you're, you're gonna wanna use a smaller print fabric uh, for, gosh, I could tell it wasn't cutting through that right. You're going to want to use a smaller, uh, print, and for the larger pieces, you can use a larger print, and the reason being, if I cut this out of a loud print, With this, this is going to be close to red, and this blends with this. So when you look at it across the room, you lose your points, you lose the definition of the block. This is just a little tip. You can use whatever you want. Use your scraps. That's my advice. All right. So I've I've minded my edges. And now we need to join piece uh, A and C together. And I'm laying this on there until I get it right because it never ever seems right. And I have lost. Again, I'm going to join piece A and C together, which is the red and the off-white. And this is where it can get tricky. Make sure that when you line this up, because my edges are not no, long, no longer rounded, I've got to really make sure that where I start stitching is right at a quarter inch so I know this is lined up correctly. You're gonna make four of these. Okay, so I've joined my pieces together of the red and the background. I'm gonna press to the dark side and I'm gonna lay this out in a pinwheel. Thank you. 
interesting. Um, I would never ever try this block without actually having a pattern. This is just odd to me, to my eyes. It's odd. It will look fine when it gets done, but just laying it out just looks odd. So I am now going to join my halves of my half square triangle. And so, all right, after you've sewn your segments together, you open them up and press to the dark side, and these should measure three and a half inches. If they do not, <clears throat> trim as necessary. And I'm going to line up my diagonal line right on the HST and then trim that. You need to subcut all of these down to get it just right so all your blocks end up the same size. Okay, so I want to show you something. So I have lined up my diagonal on this. And right down here, the severs out or off. And it doesn't come all the way to the edge. But as long as it come, you come in a quarter inch and that is fine right here where that meets, you're fine. I have my four patch done. And now I just need to sew my four patch together. Uh, press this however you want. If you want to press them open, that's fine. If you want to press to the dark side, that's fine. Um, I would never have ever thought of making this block. This is really a neat block. Okay, I'm gonna off to spin my seam. Um, I may have to pop these stitches because I'm using a vintage machine. Let's see. I find that if I use Aurifil thread, I do not have to pop my stitches, but when I use signature thread, it's more grippy or something, I don't know. All right pop the stitches automatically opens up and this is a lot of bolt coming together at the seam and there it is now the way that this block is made you will lose your point somewhat but that's how it's made so don't freak out if you lose your red tips that's how it's made now, I need to go and I need to measure this to make sure that it measures six and a half by six and a half. And it does. It's shy, just a scant right here, but whenever I go to line up the blocks, that will show. And I'm very pleased with how this block turned out. And it's, it again, this is called the Double Pinwheel Whirl Block. I really like this block. This is fun. Thanks for watching.